The public image of Bob Iger is that he's an affable guy who gets along well with everybody, unless there's a problem with that person, and I mean a serious character flaw with that person. But the Bob Iger, as exposed in this New York Times piece, shows someone that went scorched earth on anyone who opposed him, or even those who supported him, but could have gotten in his way down the line. In fact, that march out the door seems to be continuing at Disney. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Jim Jam for 4 dollars The bright spot was that some people on the board saw Strange World for what it was. That was my biggest question at the time. Did no one speak out? Well, this is an excellent segue. Uh, if they the were going to speak out, they wouldn't be on that board. Well, apparently, mm -hmm. Sapphire Katz in this article. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, she came in and said, if you release Strange World, you are going to be fired. She said this to Bob Chapek. And, and and essentially the compromise ended up being that they would put almost no marketing dollars behind Strange World. That's not from the article itself. It's from, from what we know of the internals of the company. They they took all of the marketing budget away from Strange World, which features a, 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 a gay teen uh, romance in it. On the other hand, uh, if people, if Jim Jam is laboring under the misapprehension that hey, we're thinking of make, making this movie. What do you think, board, happens? When they see it, it's already done. Unless what they're seeing is that they're doing cost overruns. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're in there at the decision process to start that ball rolling to begin with. So, you know, right. they've and already got some skin in the game and how much they may want to do about, gosh, I wish we hadn't, is now $100 million down the road. So, Well, it also takes like five years to make a Disney musical. I think it's maybe three years if it's not a musical. Unless it's called well, Moana 2, 3, 4, 5, and then <laughs> we're going to do 10 of them in the next few weeks. You want to see? Right. So they would have known very early on about this element, is what I'm trying to say. Vash? But that's the stunning thing about Safra Katz's word there. It's, it, she's saying, hey, if you release this, you're going to be fired. Kind of, I mean... With, with how it lay, it's laid out in the article and what the timeline is at that at that point, it kind of suggests that this was kind of a late in the game thing. And it doesn't matter how much money we lose. You release this thing. You're going to be fired. And the suspicion is, is because of uh, kind of the, the, the cultural values embedded in to Strange World. I'll tell you what that says. It says that at least she and presumably more of the board already realized that for a family oriented company to do this was a bad idea. Right. And the, the firing would not be, ooh, you did that because we were all involved. The firing would be, we need somebody to blame, to mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. prov provide our bona fides when we come out and make a big apology and say, this was this was this one nut with a gun. Right. And he won't be here anymore. Honest, don't don't cancel your fast pass. Well, we are going to talk about the consequences, probably of uh, the consequences to Safra Katz in here uh, in, in just a moment. But I want to get back to the uh, the article here and, uh, and and point out some of the consequences after Bob Iger got back here. Uh, we're, we're jumping ahead quite a bit here. Uh, four hours later, this is after um, after this uh, ordeal with uh, Christine McCarthy basically stabbing Bob Iger. Sorry, stabbing Bob Chapek in the back. Uh, four hours later, the news broke out. Who would be replacing him? Mr. Chapek wasn't surprised. Mr. Iger moved to swiftly, uh, sorry, moved swiftly to dismantle Mr. Chapek's legacy and stifle any internal opposition. DMED was abolished within days of his return. Its functions returned to the creative executives. Mr. Iger ousted Mr. Daniel. That is the first thing that Bob Iger did when he came back to the company. Like 6 a.m. in the morning, he fires Kareem Daniel. Mr. Perlmutter lost his job four months later. This is uh, Ike Perlmutter, the head of Marvel Entertainment, not the film division uh, here, was fired from the company. Next, Mr. Iger demanded Christine McCarthy's resignation. Publicly, this was reported as Christine McCarthy was having some health issues and she was going to step down for a little while to deal with her health issues or her husband's health issues and focus on family. Uh, and was allowed to uh, take the rest of her contract as a as a as as well as basically a consultant. While Kevin Lansbury became the uh, interim head of the finance office here, until they eventually pulled in Hugh Johnston, who is also going to be referenced in a moment in the uh, article. We'll bring in Miss Arnold. This being Susan Arnold, the head of the uh, the board, left the board in March of 2023 when her one year extension as board chair came to an end, and Miss Safra Katz left the board this July. 
Mr. Iger returned to a company beleaguered on nearly every front. He soon faced a debilitating strike by Hollywood writers and actors, then a bitter proxy fight waged by Mr. Peltz, that's Nelson Peltz, which a high-profile Disney animated film released in late 2023 became the fifth big-budget Disney film to bomb at the box office that year. Uh, it's almost shocking that the New York Times is actually willing to admit that all of these films were box office bombs uh, right. be because the narrative for a very long time was that uh, they were they were close or they made at least made some of their money back. So, yeah, Christine you know, it McCarthy. occurs to me that saying, well, it's not doing well in the theaters, but someday on Disney Plus it will. Yeah. Is uh, is the distribution side of we'll fix it in post. Oh, remember uh, they were saying pandemic related issues as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, nobody's going yeah. to the, you know all of these things, and now all and that, uh, if you are the Walt Disney Company and mm -hmm. you are celebrating that you've been doing this for a hundred years of all the flops you make at that time, the one you really don't want to flop is the one that you touted as the ultimate apotheosis which is a word that little girl at the park would probably misuse um, <laughs> of, of, of Disney animation, you know, and it's going to have all these Easter eggs in it from all the classics. And it's going to, it's going to, well, they couldn't sell the cookies. They couldn't sell the, the, the goodies to the cast members in the cast store. So, you know, oops, but oops. 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 And I agree. This is an, and if you're going to be watching perfect. movies five times before you release them, maybe you should watch the other ones once. And that one, Nine times. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a lot left to be done in that very bland movie with very bland music that was not worthy, uh, in my opinion, of of the Disney legacy here. But uh, Kareem Daniel, Ike Perlmutter, Susan Arnold, Christine McCarthy, CFO of the company, also Latonto. It's Godfather Newton Three ended up. Uh, it's yeah. Godfather Three. Today we take care of all family business. Right. Well, and, and I'll also point out uh, here, not that long after uh, this story out of the Wall Street Journal and Robbie Whalen, Disney's head of investor relations, Alexia Quadrani, is leaving her position after less mm -hmm. than three years on the job. According to an internal memo circulated Wednesday by uh, finance chief Hugh Johnston, uh, the investor relations functions will now report to uh, Carlos Gomez, according to the memo, Guadrani will transition to an advisory role with Disney. Johnston told employees that he has been in discussions for some time with Quadrani about transitioning her out of the role, especially and just now. So that anybody, anybody's confused. Transitioning you out of the role means figuring out how much we're going to pay you to go away. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I agree. And Quadrani uh, worked at J.P. Morgan. Uh, and she's been head of Disney Investor Relations since January of 2022. Uh, Disney's share price has fallen about 35% since then, as the company contended with the decline of the cable TV business, uh, streaming, and uh, management. During the tenure, activist investor Nelson Peltz mounted two bruising proxy campaigns against Disney, culminating in a vote in April in which shareholders overwhelmingly sided with management against Peltz. Uh, and shares are down 2% this year so so let's it, let's start adding this up shall we please yeah. you, you don't think she got uh hired without big bob say so do you oh right, that's no. the thing i i kind of i kind of disagree with that i think it's anybody who was part of the chapek administration right anybody who was part of the former regime must be purged and also too well, christy mccarthy being mentioned here is also very interesting because you know we heard a lot of stories about uh Kirsten McCarthy's resignation, but uh, the article alleges that uh, Iger demanded that she uh, resign. And that's an interesting thing because, well, if you played a part in the revolution, <laughs> the first thing you do when you claim power is get rid of the revolutionaries. And we heard at the at that same time that Kirsten McCarthy was at the forefront of, of maybe, you know, contributing towards this palace coup, as well, the article is so named. But, but that's, that's really my point, Vash. Mm. Uh, Maybe they all came on through JPEG, but Bob Iger hired JPEG. So he bought Pixar, and then they got rid of Lasseter, and he bought Marvel, and then they got rid of Ike, and then he bought Fox, and they paid twice as much as they should. Right, they and, they got, and they got pay. rid of Peter Rice, but that was JPEG. Right. So all mm -hmm. I'm saying is he's established an amazing track record of, well, we made a mistake, but I'll fix it. Yep. I, I think that Iger is still reshaping this company in his image. And I think the final piece here will be uh, putting Dana Walden 
uh, there. And then, and I think he's going to have some kind of supervisory function over Dana Walden, sure. unless he does the same thing that he did with Chapek and tries to find some way to appear like he's not got that supervisory function over here. Supposedly- well, and, and, and putting Walden in will be taking the sting out of saying bye-bye to KK because, well, we still have women in positions of high power, even more than high power. Just, you know, one of them is finished. She's done her job and she's ready to call it a day. No biggie. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Thanks for watching That Park Plays News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media account.